Well, well. You should have killed me. Nebula's got quite the rep in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She started as Thanos' and teamed up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers. This Lufamoid cyborg, brought to life by Karen Gillan, is no joke with her superhuman strength, agility, and knack for healing pretty fast. She's a big deal in the MCU and has this intense on-again, off-again thing going on with her adoptive sis, Gamora. Nebula is a beast in hand-to-hand -hand fights and sneaky assassination gigs. And let's not forget, she can fly a spaceship like nobody's business. Sure, her comic book version and her MCU persona share most of these cool tricks, but there's so much about her we don't really know. So, in this video, we will explore everything there is to explore about Nebula's anatomy. So, without further ado, let's begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. On the ground! Who is Nebula? What does she look like? So, Nebula had a pretty rough start. As a baby, Thanos rolls up to her planet, wipes out her family, and takes her away to mold her into this hardcore warrior. She's not exactly thrilled about her new siblings, but with Gamora, it's different. They actually hit it off feeling more like real sisters than anything else, and both the girls were Thanos' adopted daughters, so it's not really a surprising. As a child, Nebula was too freaked out to say even her name when Big Bad Thanos asked. What's his response? He gets one of his goons to chop off her ears. That's the last thing she hears before getting stuck with mechanical ears. Growing up, Nebula's life is dedicated to becoming this top-tier assassin under Ronan the Accuser's watchful eye. She used to train with Gamora and Korath, but it's Gamora she really looks up to. They both get what the other's going through. Furthermore, Thanos kept pitting Nebula against Gamora, and Gamora won. Every single time. And every time Nebula loses, Thanos upgrades her, thinking it'll level the playing field. Talk about adding insult to injury. Nebula starts to really resent Gamora for this, feeling like she's the reason for all her pain. As they grow up, Nebula starts addressing Thanos as dad, dripping with sarcasm. She's not having any of this family vibe any longer. The fights with Gamora get more intense and violent. Nebula's only focus is winning, avoiding the pain that upgrades bring her, and staying alive. Then, there's this one fight with Dervani. It's Nebula versus Gamora, racing to steal a data ingot for Ronin. Things get heated, and Gamora ends up chucking Nebula off a cliff. Ouch! Nebula's so banged up, she needs a bunch of cybernetic parts just to keep going. Does she have organic body parts? Which species does she belong to? Nebula, often seen as the mad titan Thanos' alleged granddaughter and daughter of Lufamoid leader Zor, grew up under Thanos' shadow. So yeah, she started off as Thanos' granddaughter and not his adopted daughter. This upbringing, especially Thanos' blatant favoritism towards Gamora, fueled a deep-seated resentment in her. In Avengers number 257, where she took over Thanos' old base, Sanctuary 2, this was a bold claim, especially since Thanos, an Eternal, was out of action and turned to stone. Nebula's assertion that she was Thanos' granddaughter raised eyebrows but wasn't entirely outlandish, considering Thanos' long life and his efforts to extend his lineage. Nebula's early comic appearances showed her as a fully organic alien, unlike her later cyborg version. She sported long, bluish-black hair and gauntlets for firing energy beams. Contrary to what her blue skin might suggest, she's not a Kree, but a Lufamoid. This race became scarce after Galactus devoured their home planet, Lufam, while other Lufamoids like Zor, who Nebula claims is her father, sought a new home for their people, Nebula had different aspirations. She thrived as a space pirate and mercenary leader. The truth of her lineage, both in relation to Zor and Thanos, remains a mystery. In an interesting storyline, before Thanos was trapped between life and death, Nebula sent her crew to Sanctuary 2 to fix 
its hyperdrive and teleport it out of the solar system. This led to an encounter with Monica Rambeau, then Captain Marvel, who got whisked away with the satellite. Nebula's grand plan was to conquer the Skrull Empire amidst its chaos. Captain Marvel, stuck with Nebula, played along while aiding the Skrulls. The Avengers, searching for their missing teammate, eventually teamed up with the Skrulls against Nebula. Before they could catch her, she destroyed the Skrull outpost and Xandar, the Fire Lord's home planet. The Beyonder, aiming to stay in the Avengers' good graces, teleported Nebula and her crew out of the galaxy, ending that immediate threat. Can she heal herself after getting burned by Thanos? Is she more powerful than the Mad Titan? Nebula's journey from Thanos' victim to his ultimate downfall is quite rightly a tale of resilience and unexpected power. Or at least that's how I feel, but hear me out, and you can let me know how you feel about the whole thing. After Thanos, resurrected by death, found Nebula claiming his old haunt, Sanctuary 2, he wasn't thrilled. He denied any familial ties and, in a fit of rage, set her ablaze with his eye beams, leaving her barely alive. Later in the Infinity Gauntlet saga, we find Nebula in a pretty dire state, to say the least. Thanos, now wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, kept her in a state of living death, a charred, barely conscious being, a twisted trophy of his power. He cruelly declared her a monument to life and death, but she was denied both. But during the cosmic scuffle, where Thanos faced off against Eternity and left his body to engage in this weird space battle, Thanos took his astral form. Nebula saw her chance. Despite being nearly mindless, she wasn't entirely gone. She seized the gauntlet from Thanos, instantly healed herself, and gained near omnipotence. Though her hold on the gauntlet was brief, it was crucial. She undid Thanos' reign, which led to his defeat and her own resurrection from a zombie-like existence. In the grand scheme, Nebula's role in the Infinity Gauntlet story does make her seem pretty powerful. From a pawn in Thanos' cruel game to the instrument of his undoing, her arc shows that she's big on endurance and the unpredictability of her power dynamics. As for her power compared to Thanos, while she's not inherently more powerful, her moment with the gauntlet showed that, with the right opportunity, she could turn the tables on the Mad Titan. They made such a big deal about who would wield the gauntlet in Endgame, we had one figure right here who could have become Thanos' undoing. How did she get her cybernetic enhancements in the first place? Post-Infinity Gauntlet, she was a shadow of her former self, mentally shattered and physically worn. She was captured after the Infinity Gauntlet was taken from her, which is when Guitar, her loyal right-hand man, busted her out of her cell on Titan. He finds her in a catonic state, her mind scrambles from her brief stint with omnipotence. Desperate to help, Guitar takes Nebula to Dr. Mandibus, a name that spells hope for those needing extreme medical interventions. But Mandibus finds himself in a bit of a dilemma. Nebula's damage is beyond conventional healing, so he offers to swap out the broken bits with high-tech cybernetics. Nebula wakes up to a new reality. She's part machine now, with a bionic arm that doubles as an energy weapon. And she also received a bionic eye, which made her look like the Nebula from the MCU. Additionally, these enhancements amplify her abilities way beyond her previous limits. This cyber cybernetic makeover is essentially a total reboot, mentally and physically. Nebula, now a bald, badass cyborg, was back in the game stronger than ever. She dives headfirst back into her space pirate life, teaming up with Guitar to spring their crew from the Anvil, a notorious space prison. But when things go south, thanks to the Silver Surfer and Jack of Hearts, Nebula doesn't hesitate. She makes a ruthless call and sacrifices her crew to secure her own escape. So basically, this new cyborg-enhanced Nebula isn't a contradiction to her old self. She's always been tough as nails, cold, and calculating. The cybernetics just turned up the volume on her already cunning nature.
She can hack systems using only her hand. Are both of Nebula's hands cybernetic? I think I made it abundantly clear that Nebula's cybernetic arm is not just a replacement limb. In the comic titled Guardians of the Galaxy Prelude, the arm originated from her daring escape from a laser thorn energy net in the cloud tombs of Praxias. And as Optimus Prime would say, it is more than meets the eye. It doubles as an electricity generator, which came in handy for powering up a busted Ravager ship to take down a a fleet of sovereign ships. Furthermore, this arm is a hacker's wet dream. By 2026, thanks to Rocket, she was showing off an upgraded arm that's not just a limb, but a shape-shifting tool of destruction. Need a cannon or a blade? Nebula's arm has got it covered. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, she used it to bring Thanos and his army to the present, connecting her tech to the Quantum Tunnel's computer. Nebula's Temper Steel Claws – Marvel's Secret Weapon? Nebula's Temper Steel Claws are the ultimate multi-tool in her arsenal of cybernetic enhancements. These retractable bad boys, one on each hand, are her secret weapon for scaling surfaces like a pro. Remember that scene in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie? That's where she flaunted these claws, climbing the cloud tombs of Praxeus in pursuit of the orb, an infinity stone. But after losing her left arm, she also lost one of these claws. It's a bit of a setback but Nebula's not one to be easily deterred. But how did she get these claws? Well, it has to be Thanos, the guy who's all about flesh is weak. When he was patching up Nebula's wounds, he went full-on tech upgrade on her. It's safe to say that the Temper Steel Claws serve as one of the most important tools in Nebula's cybernetic toolkit. They're precise, they're practical, and they allow her to get away through tricky terrain with ease. How and why has her brain been replaced? Nebula's transformation into a cybernetic being isn't just limited to her appearance and physical attributes. It also extends to her very brain. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, she revealed that Thanos didn't just tinker with her body, he went all in, ripping out her organic brain. The extent of this radical change becomes clear in Avengers Infinity War. Held captive by Thanos, it's evident that her brain isn't what it used to be. Thanos, with his advanced technology, accesses her memory files like someone flipping through a digital photo album. So this guy went pretty far in his quest to remake her. In the world of the MCU, where tech leaps are the norm, this brain replacement surgery becomes a brutal reality for Nebula, which turns her into a living, breathing piece of advanced machinery far removed from her original self, which gets reflected in the way she behaves around others and her rather cold and emotionless behavior. Ronan, the Nova Corps has sent a fleet to defend. Does she have the ability to use cybernetic communication? Nebula's got a strange trick up her sleeve, or more accurately, in her head, the ability to communicate cybernetically. She's used this feature to tip off the Sakarans about Gamora having the orb. This implant means Nebula doesn't bother with regular gadgets. Why would she? She's practically a walking, talking communication device. In Avengers Endgame, she used this internal communication system to give Thanos a heads up about the nano gauntlet during the chaos at the new Avengers facility. <laughs> Nebula's resilience, a question of pain. Does she feel it? Nebula's cybernetic upgrades might give off the vibe of being painproof, but that's not the full story. Sure, she's tough as nails. We've seen her snap back into action after taking a hit from Drax like it was nothing, but she's not numb to pain. The real deal about her pain threshold comes to light in Avengers Infinity War. Nebula's caught by Thanos after trying to take him down. She's his prisoner aboard Sanctuary 2. Thanos uses Nebula's pain as a leverage to get Gamora to spill the beans on the Soul Stone's location. He does this by tearing her apart, literally separating her cybernetic parts from her flesh. Luckily, Nebula's resilience helps her recover quickly. Thanks to one of Thanos' minions, who puts her back together, she makes her escape. So while Nebula might seem like a walking tank, she's not impervious to pain. Does she have healing abilities? Nebula's cybernetic implants also help her bounce back from brutal beatdowns that would take down anyone else. In the movies, 
She has taken a direct hit from Drax's cannon, and you'd think that's game over. But thanks to her implants, she does more than just survive. She can snap her body back into shape. It's not just Drax's cannon she's walked away from. Take the exploding M-ship incident, or that time she got into a scrap with Adam Warlock and his Hellspawns. In each case, Nebula acts like a Terminator, reshaping her mangled body back to its original form. The secret behind her almost miraculous recoveries is her regeneration implant. This implant lets her heal up fast and get back to her formidable self in no time. It's a crucial part of what makes her such a tough cookie in the face of overwhelming odds. Promises, promises. Marvelous Verdict So, essentially, Nebula from the Marvel Cinematic Universe has quite the story. Originally popping up in the comics as Thanos' so-called granddaughter, she was once a regular lufamoid with a funky hairstyle. She's this hardcore cyborg with a mechanical left arm and a brain implant thanks to Thanos' not-so-gentle touch. This gear-up makes her stronger and smarter, but she still feels pain. In the comics, especially during the Infinity Gauntlet saga, Nebula is first seen as Thanos' Thanos' victim, but then she grabs the Infinity Gauntlet from him and turns the tables, becoming super powerful and key to beating him. Post-Infinity Gauntlet, she gets even more cybernetic upgrades, which boosts her fighting game. Now, in the MCU, Nebula's path is a bit different. She starts off on the dark side but gradually shifts towards being an anti-hero. Her rocky relationship with Gamora, her sister in spirit, and the whole Thanos daddy issue make her a deeper character. She's got layers, dealing with self-doubt, figuring out who she is, stuff we can all kind of relate to. Ultimately, she ditches Thanos, teams up with the good guys, and goes after him for all the grief he has caused her. A pretty complex character, I'd say. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone!